think a key challenge I'd like to raise to your attention, it's not a new one, but it's uh, it's a current one and it's, it's going forward is, uh, is the fact that uh, corrosion of steel uh, represents a global issue that affects about three to four percent of, of global GDP. Uh, and zinc is a is a great solution for this uh, for this global issue. Uh, we like to say that zinc is married to steel, but steel is not married to zinc, and I'd like it to be both ways. Uh, only about six percent of of steel is currently protected by zinc uh, from corrosion, but that six percent represents uh, sixty percent of the overall zinc market, which is around thirteen to fourteen million tons. So it's a tremendous opportunity and challenge. Uh, to try and get further market penetration of that 94% um, of steel that's remaining that's not being protected. And we have a number of ways to do this, uh, but if we can achieve better penetration, increase the protection of steel, we can uh, reduce that impact on GDP, it would have a tremendous impact on uh, economic aspects as a result, as you can imagine. One is nickel is about to enter a new phase uh, of its market development. It started with alloys for military applications, moved to stainless steel in the mid 50s, 60s, and now we're entering its EV growth phase where EV is going to be driving nickel demand growth going forward. Um, and and it, the, the second thing is, you know, nickel is already high growth metal and, and EV demand is going to make it grow even faster, much faster than most of the other base metals. Three, we have no visibility on any supply outside of Indonesia, you know, uh, coming through the next decade. And so, you know, a single dependence on one jurisdiction, India, is not a global supply chain strategy. It's not going to work for a lot of players. And the fourth thing is, you know, large scale low grade nickel sulfides like the one that we have just north of Timmins are one of the few sources of new supply that, you know, can help uh, bridge that gap. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at this chart, you know, we've we've had, uh, you know, a lot of uh, economic recovery coming in on that V-shape. And, and that's really what's driven and powered this copper market a little bit higher. You know, overall, we've seen a little bit of supply disruptions, you know, coming out of South America. You know, South America produces about you know, close to half of all copper production. And, uh, you know, with the pandemic having some some issues around uh, Chile, which, of course, we are operating in, um, you know, basically at a 6.2 million um, uh, ton market. Um, uh, that decline was was a little bit uh, related to COVID, same with Peru. And so you had this sort of alignment of, you know, demand coming out of China, uh, which we've seen, of course, increase 40 percent in the first nine months from year over year. So an astonishing amount. Of recovery and you know a little bit of mix of this uh, discussion around the supply chain um, and supply coming out of uh, other parts of the world with, with respect to COVID has pushed you know the market you know significantly higher. So this just shows the um, uh, the impact on base metals. Left hand chart is the London Metal Exchange Index. We're now trading at around two year highs, um, having uh, seen the um, the lows earlier in the year and the falls due to the trade tensions between China and the US uh, last year. Uh, and the chart on the right showing global manufacturing PMIs and the LMEX just illustrates this V-shaped recovery uh, that we now have. The weaker dollar definitely helping uh, the Fed uh, adopting a very accommodative monetary policy, more fiscal stimulus, likely to keep uh, the dollar uh, weakening. Uh, and that will provide a tailwind both to all commodities, as we can see on the left hand side, the BCOM commodity index, and specifically metals, as we can see on the right hand side, as the dollar weakens, that provides an underpinning to metal prices that are moving higher. Coming to lead, uh, the same story about the stocks and LME. Let's not try to correlate them. Uh, stocks have been more or less stagnant. Uh, and we have seen recent increase in lead, but we still say if we compare it with zinc, it's just a metal zinc because they are generally formed together. We would say that lead has underperformed. And uh, it, it is quite natural that uh, because of lead is 60% uh, primary and 40, 45% of secondary. So it is it's quite natural that the lead LME is not just related to fortunes of zinc, but also the availability of uh, secondary lead. Uh, however, this is a time when lead generally sees this kind of increase because uh, this is the winter time in the Northern hemisphere. 
lead uh, batteries uh, need more lead. Uh, so here we see the spike, uh, but certainly it has underperformed, especially because there is also uh, tightness and concentrate market of lead, which is quite natural because zinc and lead are generally formed together. So if there is tightness in zinc, it will be in lead as well. For two years, we get focused to make um, property investments and the mining investments in the Turkey area because Turkey government has um, started to find found new mining lands in Turkey and this is not uh, one to uh, we cannot uh, count at the moment it's really a lot that means Turkey um, Turkey metal position is now we are importer country yes but However, in the following years, this will be changed as we will be biggest um, exporters in the world. Uh, I I would agree. I I think uh, I think you'll see a switch certainly from uh, the standpoint of the uh, some of the trade wars that have been going on uh, during the Trump administration. I think you'll see more harmonization. Uh, I'm certainly hoping. Um, between the United States and uh, its trading partners, uh, whether that be China or or um, the other uh, regions in the world, and you know certainly from a um, uh, investment standpoint, uh, in terms of infrastructure and so forth, uh, there wasn't any real investment in that area in uh, the United States uh, in the last four years, and that is certainly the expectation going into the next. Um, uh, time period under uh, uh, President Biden-elect uh, is a, a major investment into that area, which all experts and I think all sides, uh, Republicans or Democrats would agree is is much needed and has been missing for uh, decades now. So there'll be, uh, I, I would suspect, support for that. And that would be uh, hopefully a long-term driver for uh, zinc and some of the other commodities for the next couple of years. Yeah, no, it's still, you know, I think most long-term forecasts are in a sort of 75 to 78 cent range versus the dollar. And un unless it really breaks out of that range in a material way, you know, I, I don't think you'll see any, any big impact on, on, on most of the miners. You know, fundamentally, you know, it's, it's being, that strength is more US dollar weakness than Canadian dollar strength, um, you know, 15 years ago, we were in a great place fiscally in terms of uh, government deficits, uh, trade balances and so forth, and current account um, balances, but we've completely blown that up. So, um, you know, I think the long-term trend on the dollars is, is likely lower from these kind of ranges, but uh, it, it'll take some time to work through. Well, I think uh, if we are talking about right now, uh, it is more of uh, demand coming back after COVID. Uh, the demand is is certainly not uh, fueled by something happening specially, because uh, pre-COVID levels, uh, from pre-COVID levels in, in in January or so, uh, we have reached back there again. So so I can't I can't point out any one particular sector which is driving the demand, because the first step was to you know to go back where we were. And I think September onwards, we have gone there. Uh, but uh, auto sector has been, uh, you know, one of those sectors which has uh, fueled this demand to an extent. But at the same time, you know, uh, November is, is the Diwali time in India, which is a festival time. And a lot of auto sector uh, purchases that you see is, is during these times. So whether or not uh, you can use uh, this particular time to analyze whether there is something special happening in the demand, I think it will be too soon. Uh, in, in future, uh, for zinc demand, infrastructure has always uh, been the sector because it goes to steel mills for galvanizing. This is where 70% of Indian zinc goes. Uh, 